Welcome everybody to Dive Bar of Democracy. That's M-O-Z-K. It's Friday night and we're doing it right. There's only one way that we do it, and that's the fuck 'em fam way. We have no idea what's going to be our topics tonight. We have no idea who our host is going to be tonight, but it's going to be the most random internet show that you ever will encounter. That's the one thing I do promise you. So, with that being said, let's meet the gang. Oh, remember, the duchy always goes to the left. <laughs> Killer. We are. We, we really are. It's uh, Decorum is really our, our number one thing that's mostly important to us, truly. <laughs> Hey, it's Disco D this week. The, the Texas Blue Bonnet herself is uh, going to bring us... I'm sure that she's got something to say about what's going on in, down in Texas. <laughs> I wonder... I wonder do you, uh, really? Do you think... You really think she might feel passionate about Texas politics? Well, of course. I mean, who did... I mean, it's a... It's so just a fucking cesspool of, <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it, without, you know, wanting to just say a bunch of curse words, it just, because which we it, encourage it, thoroughly, you, you know, I mean, it's, it's, yes. ju- it's just so like, it's fucking ridiculous and it's so corrupt. Like, well, Ken Paxton, you know, wonk, Mr. Wonky Eye. <laughs> Walky eyes, criminal con man just you know just you know got out of some those charges that he had about from fraud for for years you know like he, that's so not fair i wonder how he got that you know it's almost like trump but, called in and said hey don't prosecute him hey, what? oh but supposedly he's still going to trial for the whole thing that he was so, you know, Pleasure. supposed to be impeached for, you know, that he didn't, you know, which he should have been because, I mean, this dude just crumbing all over the place. And he's just, he's suing everybody, suing school, suing here, suing there. <laughs> yeah, Paxton's trash. Like, I mean, he, there's hard, hard evidence of everything that he did. Every, like, hard evidence. Oh, yeah. And, I mean... You know, Trump just called his boys in and said, "Hey, don't prosecute him." Yep. It's like with Ken Paxton. It's almost like he he like wakes up in the morning and says, <laughs> "How big of an asshole can I be today?" Oh, school did one little thing I don't like. I'm sure I can sue him for something, or at least just bankrupt them so they have to close oh, about years. <laughs> like yeah, I mean- it really feels like that though sometimes. They didn't get their, you know, they called that the freaking house back, what, four times because they couldn't get the voucher thing passed. And, you know, apparently that was on the Republican primary ballot as far as, but, you know, they don't give a shit. They're really trying to get this voucher thing, you know, going. And, and that's just, that's, no, no, that's, that's basically, you know, giving money away to rich people for them to go whatever i don't want to hear your crap when you say no you're going to take away especially rural communities like you've already taken away money especially the texas education system right now because it sucks and it just keeps sucking no you know they just want to they they teach to a test they want to dumb everybody down just sorry it you know and the whole you know it's just it's just the slew of texas is just like this epicenter of bullshit yeah. that you know like the christian taliban crap and i'm like and so for some reason i look around and i'm like this at other people that live here and i'm like you know i get it but come on like just do you really want these kind of people running your your government? 
Well, you know, I think it's not so much that people want them in power. It's that there's a little bit of, from what I've been hearing from a lot of other, a lot of um, Texas, like, um, you know, um, I don't want to say influencers, but, you know, like, like uh, that Olivia chick. And, you know, there's a lot of um, Gen Z advocates like that talk about Texas. And it's not so much that like Texas is red. It's that there's such a lack of app or a lack of like voting. Like there's a yes. really People big not, taste of apathy thinking that they can't change it. We are a non-voting state. And that has been the death of us these last few elections. Because I'm like, all these people who registered to vote are just sitting on their ass. And I, you know, and I'm like, and you, we tried every single thing to try to get these people motivated to get out and vote. And I'm like, what is it going to take? You know. And I know we're gerrymandered as hell, but if these people would get out and vote, we might have a chance. Yeah, I mean, that's well, I not mean, 100% true. I mean, I mean, but I think everybody goes in thinking that it's going to be, you know, rigged or gerrymandered so hard that like it's not going to count. I don't, I don't know. You know, I'm just like, you don't know until you get out and we got to get out. I mean, you, we're not going to change anything. We sit at home on our asses. Do you, you really know? think and, that? And, the Republican Party has been able to get people so um, discouraged uh, on the blue side that, that they they could possibly never win, so they decide to just disenfranchise their vote. I mean, also, what's going on with Houston? How many votes are they throwing out? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and he was on... Biggest... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't... Sorry, it, no, Houston is one of our biggest cities. I mean, it's the biggest city in Texas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I got, I've driven I, I-10 I through Texas to play in Rudyard's and the Continental Club. It's a big, big fucking city. And there's um a lot of blue votes in that city. And I think that obviously that's one of the main reasons they need to disenfranchise it. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're playing games and, and you know, they're, they're able to get away with it. And, and just, it's. I'm pretty sure at the federal level. Like, you know, I, I'm sure like the state um, you know, legislature will take years and years to like, flip. not that it can't happen. I mean, you know, how many state legislatures have flipped, you know, that was, right. it was thought impossible. But I think at the federal level, like um, Colin Allred, I think, has a really good shot against Ted yeah. Cruz. I think a lot of the federal, like where the whole state has to vote, like it's not, you know, yeah. Because Jeremy like in our Senate, just, every vote counts. Like yeah. when you're doing state elections, you yeah. Know. So like, I think a lot of those votes um, or those offices have a really good chance at. And I mean, Ken Paxton. Um, this was either like right before or right after the impe- impeachment. He was on an interview. He said something to the effect of, "Well, if I didn't get two hundred and fifty thousand votes or something insane like that thrown out." Biden would have won Texas. So, Mm -hmm. like, I mean, and I know a lot of people are working hard. It's just, they, you know, Republicans have worked so long and so hard and got so good at being louder, convincing people that it doesn't matter what they do. Texas is going to be Texas. And, you know, when you're beaten down and beaten down like that, it's, you know, I get it. It's hard to when nobody around you is like you know we all have like our either each other or we have um other family members or friends who are politically active to like say hey get back in that fight you know when you're when you feel like overwhelmed and beaten down but a lot of people don't have that and you know i get but at the same time you like if you have one thing that you can do is just get off your ass and vote, even if you think it's going to do nothing. Right. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, George W. Bush became our president by 500 votes. It can have 500 can little happen. votes. If I'm not mistaken, during the midterms, um, good God, I mean, what was we? That was supposed to be a bloodbath. It truly was, but because negative partisanship has created engagement. Uh, especially on the blue side, where we're really seeing not only we stop the midterms, but well, 
for for luck we did we s- didn't stop them but they were a hell of a lot better than they could have been we stopped them okay. like even though we didn't win like mm-hmm. that's a stopping it like you know we lost by just a handful of seats that if new york hadn't fucked up its nap or whatever we would have won the house like that they, I mean, they were supposed to win the house by like what, like thirty, forty seats. Like it was supposed to be a bloodbath, and like look what happened. And you know what Republicans and I, I don't, I almost don't want to even say this in case like somebody's watching and like this it, all of a sudden they dawns on them because it seems so obvious to me. <laughs> you don't realize that they keep on doubling down, and doubling down, and doubling down on issues that are doing them no favors. Wow. So. You know, they well, think they have. they have this super majority to work with to make our lives hell. And like, they just look ridiculous. And that, I mean, to, at least for the people that pay attention and are involved, um, even at the most rudimentary level, I mean, that helps, that just helps us because they I look mean, stupid. Texas didn't even expand Medicaid. I don't think Missouri offered. did either. And, you know, I don't, I don't know, and I don't understand because there are a lot of people here that rely, you know, on disability or whatever, but you need to expand Medicaid. I don't under, you know, like, they I don't just, even know. They don't even know they're voting against, like, they're, they're voting. Shit. I'm like, you people, do you understand? Like, especially a lot of these people, a lot of these people don't have mon- a lot of money. I mean, and, per, and and rely on their social security or whatever they're get, you know, insurance through, you know, you know, a lot of times, you know, if you're lucky, you can afford a supplement. So in case you have to go to the hospital, you know, but they didn't expand Medicaid. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's just ridiculous. They don't, they don't care. They want, they, it's all about money. They don't give a crap. They don't want to give anybody, you know money they want to take it for themselves they want to help anybody i mean oh, those ridiculous oh go ahead i'm sorry i want to caveat off of that and say if it wasn't all about money why does the electrical system freeze oh god <laughs> yeah they're all big and bad getting their own system and it never works like i don't think they i don't think they realize it's not the flex they think it is <laughs> and then when they freeze they love that sweet sweet socialism oh, yeah, yeah they love they will charge like yourself a pass in, on gas when shit like that happens. Mm-hmm. Just one point to go back to the education thing. There's a reason they're attacking education. Like you were just talking about how Houston is the blue area. What's in Houston? JSC is in Houston. Johnson Space Center. There's a lot of aerospace and very well-educated people there. That's why it's a blue area. That's why they don't want that in their state. And they want to stupefy the population. Like nobody can t- tell me anything different. Like they didn't. They realize. Don't don't fool. Nobody should fool themselves. They will try this again and like give it another generation. They're trying to stupefy the next generation so that like too many of us know about like the links together to fascism. So they're mm-hmm. not. They're it's failing. But if they get um, a dumber population, then the next time will be a lot easier. So that's why they're, I mean, Idaho doesn't want to expand its broadband to rural areas. Why is that? Why would you do that to rural people for internet? I mean, just for Netflix at the bare minimum, like, you know, they're, um, you know, uh, in West Virginia, now library directors um, don't need a master of library science to be a director. Why is that? So they can install their own people, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think luckily because we've seen the threat that fascism caused and um, we sort of are banding together and rising up in the same way that the anti-fascists had to in the 30s. You know, if you listen to Ultra, you know, it talks about some of the plucky anti-fascists that... Uh, you know, banded together to make sure that they were heard. And I think that because we have had to do that again, but we've had to do it in a mass, a mass way in which we're making content. We are, uh, you know, sharing people people. like Rachel Bedekoffer's book, um, creating 
literal strategy to never lose elections again to lies, for lack of better words. Because, I mean, really, what do they have as lies? And the one thing we've learned to do is bring their lies into the sunlight. And that's what the previous generations that didn't have to worry about fighting fascism didn't have to worry about. Because, honestly, they didn't really have to pay attention to politics. And we have a massive spotlight. We have the internet. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, when Charlie Kirk is sitting there putting uh, tweets out that say uh, Biden has more money than Trump, uh, we are, the left is organized, we have more than 5,000 people boots on ground registering people to vote, he says we are outgunned and outspent when he's saying that, I mean... That that might have been him three three in the morning rage tweeting, but there's a reason he's saying that. Yeah, I, I have something right here for Charlie Kirk. Hold on. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Let, let me let well me turn played, it up. It's sir. still pretty well quiet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what's you know what's crazy about Charlie Kirk is first of all he like he's like on point for using fear to like scare his little base up like charlie kirk audacity like he is so audacious like first of all y'all should watch his um debate with rachel bitter because it was actually like you actually don't hate him as much then you read the title that he puts under her at for her uh for her debate it's leftist professor dr rachel bittekoffer like everybody he debates that's on the left of sorts he puts like marxist this person debate with charlie kirk and like but what what's the icing on the cake is he says he's not bothered by the left he mm-hmm. not necessarily us but mm-hmm. the left from center to you know far left it under his skin because i mean he literally copied her book like i had no idea that like it was literally yeah. that that yeah. close yeah the yeah. cover yeah. even fucking jacket and his his base won't ever know that he like basically you know what i kind of like i don't want to spend money on it but i kind of want to like skim through it to see like what he says because i bet you it's it's just like her book but like this is what they're doing it's and just like opposite world of it. every chapter, basically, like taking what she says as facts and honesty and then <laughs> uh, just putting it through the uh, the spin cycle. And um, yeah, yeah, just the fash can't original. <laughs> and I mean, I'm definitely not like, li- you know, because I'm a big audiobook person. I'm definitely not listening to him for like two hours no. like i his voice like i'd rather oh. shit in my hands and clap <laughs> right yeah. yeah definitely so, so which chapter is labeled women aren't people <laughs> oh, right? yeah probably probably the first and 15th it's, it's right after the eradicate transgenderism chapter yeah is is that right before or after uh when we say republic we mean empire <laughs> God, i can't stand you know um i forget her name um I, I it's a odd name but she has a really great youtube channel where she breaks down different like political things she's a lawyer got like kind of platinum hair short hair uh, uh lita miller yeah Lisa yes, miller. Yes, her. miller yeah yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, she, uh, dude, I just lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> what were we talk- oh, you were talking, oh gosh. You were talking about Lisa Miller? <laughs> Being a lawyer and making content? Oh, yeah. So she, like, broke down, like, not only just Project 2025, but she breaks down, like, rights, the right, and, like, different points, like, smaller points of view on different things. Well, one of the ones that... Um, she did that was really helpful and I'll try to find the link or whatever. Um, it was the one she did on, it's not a democracy. It's a constitutional Republic. That's yeah. a good one. According to her, it's not, it's, neither. Neither. it's but, both. Like, yeah. It's has, neither or both. <laughs> it's neither or both. 
but like and you know it, really she's like being facetious when she says yeah, exactly. neither but like uh, and she had i gotta go back and watch it because she says this really great quote because people who are saying it's not a democracy it's a republic mm -hmm. um they're just trying to sound so smart and like yeah I'm, so what I, can't. I, what I do when i when i hear someone say that, it's like oh it's not a democracy it's a republic i say those are not mutually exclusive and then wait for them to act like they know what those words mean my favorite <laughs> is to say yeah. and when they say it's a constitutional republic and a, a constitutional republic i like to retort with and that's a form of if people vote that is a Say it with us, kids. Democracy. Say it with us, kids. Democracy. However, a bad th a bad faith actor will say a form of government. I've actually had that retort. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. I was like, it's well, like, this like, is obviously a bad faith no, fucking answer. <laughs> pretty much no country in the world votes, like has a pure democracy. Like they either have um, some form of a constitutional republic or a constitutional parliament, um, like some like mixture of those. Don't work. Yeah, pure democracy. I think Switzerland had one for a while, but I think they are a parliament now. The but that was the only one. Decisions. Yeah, so like it's not mob rule when, like. You're voting for representatives and all of the people, all the representatives. Like if the country is mostly Democratic, which if you put the populations of New York and California, that alone sways us heavily blue in, you know, and our, our popular vote shows us that we're definitely will vote more blue when it comes down to it. But like, that's not mob rule. That's just population and if the population is bigger in new york and california well you get minority rule in the senate because wyoming with five hundred thousand people has the same like amount of power as new york does with like how many millions of people so you know it, gosh i i hate those people they give me like I, i'm getting my blood pressure up just thinking about it right now i completely well, get to... it because <laughs> I want to make sure that anybody who's listening or does listen to this again, when the right says republic, they mean empire and they want an emperor. Yes. If questioned yeah, about right. what do you yeah. think about they're the right. Roman yeah. Empire, they, want that. they will retort they want with, what do I think about the Roman Republic? <laughs> They're trying to turn it into a republic or a non-constitutional or a non-democratic republic all the time. They're, they actually tried to pass a law here in Colorado that in order to pass any statewide voter, you know, voter referendum, they had to get over, I think, over 50 percent of the uh, less populated areas, like all the rural counties. Oh, come on. Yeah. That's minority so, rule. Come on. <laughs> it is. And like I literally had an argument with someone in my family about it, and they're just like, "Oh no, no, it makes it better. It makes it more democratic." And just like I don't understand the math of it, but it does. It's like I do understand the math, and, and it's it not doesn't. one person, one vote, so it's not democratic. <laughs> no, I mean, what are you gonna do? Like have like runoffs after that, or like that's stupid. You know what? It, it you know what I wish. You know what I wish we had that I think is really smart um, is. Um, which is also more democratic, but a lot of people don't understand it, so they'll they'll like say no to it. Um, that rank choice voting, mm -hmm. I think that is a really good idea. Um, and they hate it; they're trying to get rid of it in Alaska. Oh yeah. yeah, I think it's great. I think it's such a great idea, and like if they really understood it, like they would love it because it gives them more chance for their guy to win versus um, like no chance. I like yeah, we have that in California, and our like our primary had you know five or five of each Republicans and Democrats, and you saw everything, and it was just top Republican, top Democrat gets gets to move on. That's the rank choice kind of thing. Yeah, they get they get all weirded out because like okay, if you the guy you voted for is last, like those votes get 
your second choice, like if you put a second choice, then that, like, they don't get that, that it gives more of a chance for your dude to be the winner. But just by listing, yeah, I don't know how many you can rank, but... Um, Yeah, we don't get Again, that. voting against your own interest. Because it's really because mm -hmm. they want, they can get more of a dictatorship. Like, even if Trump loses, even if all, like, nothing, you know, that we get all um, branches of government in this election cycle, it's still closer to a dictatorship, this voting system, than if they have ranked choice voting. And they don't want to take any more steps back than they already um, have taken in their little plot. Thank God they were dumb in their plot, and they made a lot of fatal mistakes. Um, hopefully we don't, like, forget this lesson. Like, if, you know, if everything works out in November, I hope to God we don't forget this lesson. Yeah. So there's no, the, they're going to be the great, uh, the great fascism uh, I don't know, purge uh, when we have to talk to the next generations, or have to be like, look, they're going to try this shit again. Mm -hmm. That's where education yeah. comes in. Like, we all have to tell all the young people we know, all the people who are children even now, hey, recognize this. This is what it looks like. I, t I teach Stop my it. daughter this. Like, she probably hates being my kid because I, I make her sit down. And I teach her so many boring things. Look, but she needs to know this stuff. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, and then she's off. not learning it in school, so... Like, and it's important. Yeah, they so. try teaching it in school. They just call it woke. Um, there was a 1945, roughly. It's no, I think it's called Spirit of 42. But it was a Disney cartoon that was about ta how your taxes help to defeat the Axis, and that's truly what got me to be, uh, you know, interested and in, um, you know, how the Nazis came to power, and um, you know, what the United States did to fight against them, but. Also, at the same time, I'm fairly certain that like KMFDM in the 90s radicalized me against fascism. <laughs> well, you know, like what like, in Rage Against I Machine. love a good story. I I love a good story, and I grew up in a huge Jewish population, so I've been listening to Holocaust survival stories since I was like in fourth grade. And you know, it wasn't mm -hmm. you know they didn't. It was always age appropriate. It wasn't like some horrifying thing that we listened to in fourth grade, you know. But to talk about the Holocaust in any other way, but hearing it from survivors, I mean, these are the grandparents and mm -hmm. um, sometimes even parents of my yeah. of my peers at the time. So, like, to talk about it in any other way is insulting to them, you know. And so, um, not only did I have, like, a very, um, you know, uh, it opens your eyes to different groups of people and different, you know, walks of life. But it also, like, you learn how awful people can be. Like, I was fully aware, even though I'm hearing the story at an age-appropriate fourth grade level, I'm still very well aware of... It's like these are fairly modern it. times and the amount that they, yeah. the amount mm -hmm. of modern efficiency that they used to strictly uh, not only first take power, but then to actually literally eliminate people. Because uh, here in Germany, um, the way that the towns are set up, basically... I don't know, they're so that they can be very easily just blocked off. And I could see how, you know, they could do the raids so 100% absolutely easily. And it, it was done with maximum efficiency. And the way that if the american taliban wanted to that they could literally i mean because you know the fash can't original but they would literally i i i don't know i think use almost the same playbook as as rwanda did when they did their thing because you know i mean look how fast that happened yeah that was that was terrible but you know like one thing i will say about the rwandan genocide is um how they handled it when it was over. And I think, and I like, you know, it, 
how, a lot of what they did afterwards was they brought people together, people who murdered oh. their neighbors, like parents or their husband or whatever. They brought those people together, bridge into forgiveness. And it was really difficult. I watched this documentary on this, like this exchange that they did, like with a whole bunch of communities and they did like mediated and now they're like, they genuinely care for one another and they've given, and why I bring this up is this country sucks at is reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Like after the civil war, like Germany after world war two, and beyond does an excellent job in teaching about the Holocaust and what happened. And they make people feel uncomfortable because it's uncomfortable to talk about. Yeah. They, they don't, they make sure that like, it's not your fault. Like this is the way you shouldn't feel, you should feel bad. Cause it's, it's a sad event. Not that you bear any responsibility for it. And I think they, and this country, we, we're never going to, we're never going to get over things unless we start doing that hard work of, Bridging divide, and you know, if people in Rwanda can come together, forgive one another after that, like, you know, it just it makes me slightly hopeful that maybe we can get past this. But also, people like people in this country have the, this cognitive dissonance that, like, yeah, they have the ability to know, gaslight themselves away from any sort of actual responsibility. I mean, that's why the Civil War down in the South is still called the War of Northern Aggression. Um, it's in, I mean, I, I, I was talking, you know, with Tamara and I was like, you know, I really hate to say this, but everything that the Germans did, you know, during the Nazi era, they got from America. Lebensraum was based on manifest destiny and the Nuremberg laws were based on Jim Crow. Well, I mean, Hitler had a copy of, uh, Henry Ford's publications about, he had a photo of him behind his desk. <laughs> <laughs> and like his ideas on essentially Jewish genocide. Yeah. So like, yeah. I mean, I'm sure they came up with some of their own flavor of genocide, but like essentially, yeah, they, they got a lot of ideas from from us. Yeah. And it's crazy how quickly that got forgotten that we were so we were pretty close to um a fascist uh Mm -hmm. well i mean not only do we have internment camps but also you know i mean we had a huge fash you know supporting population but at the same time we never ever once apologized for manifest destiny never once yeah just going back to the teaching of it though so i was lucky enough like a lot of you were to have known some survivors but those people are gone correct the ones i knew they were 70, 70 or 80, 20 years ago. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. They're, they're probably long since dead now. Yeah. So it's like, what can you do to teach it to people? And I'll say, uh, I read Night, if any of you have ever heard of that book, mm-hmm. N-I-G-H-T yeah. by Ellie Wiesel. It's like when I was 17, and that really, that's, it's a list. dark book. You definitely shouldn't read it if you're younger than 17 or 16 or so, because it is extremely brutal. Yeah. But it's but what happened. But you know what? Fuck that. Like, kids today are playing Halo and, like, video games that are lifelike. Like, exactly. you shoot somebody in the head and you see brain matter come out. <laughs> so, like, I'm sick of hearing about, like, kids can't handle this or kids can't handle that. I'm sorry. If your kid plays Call of Duty, I don't want to hear your opinion on what's age appropriate. Yeah. Spare me the cl- pearl clutching. Yeah. Like, Man. it. I mean, it's just a really convenient way of saying I want my kid to learn about this because this is kind of what I'm into. So Yeah, and I've been calling people out on it, too. Like, some I know and some I don't know. But, like, like, I'm sorry. Like, you should hear the stuff my daughter tells me that other kids do. Like, and she's in sixth grade. Like, so, I'm sorry. Oh, it's all good. I'm um, saying I uh, I have a child and about the same age and uh, she has friends and they all um, yeah they understand that they're games but they also um, have a different take on like social matters when we when we see the MAGA nut chuds going oh trans oh they're indoctrinating your children at school and they're worried about all this grooming or whatever they want to call it um, the kids are like no they 
and they brush it off so fast and so easy that we don't know how to handle it. And yeah. that's the other side. I think I think we're that we're going to learn from these this younger generation. Oh, these kids absolutely. are just coming up to vote. Yeah, once they're old enough to vote, that's the thing. They're smarter, they're faster, and they're able to disseminate and look up information. They're pissed off. But right now, they're just not old enough to vote just yet. They're pissed off. My daughter, you know, is sixth grade. She's uh, 11. So, like, she's already angry about shit the way shit is. Like, she's already a social justice warrior, and she doesn't even know it yet. And, like, what nice. they don't understand, like, when you're talking, like, when these GOP are talking shit about, like, trans people or gay people or Muslim people or whoever, you're they're, you're talking about their friends. Mm-hmm. You're exactly. talking about their peers. Exactly. And will some of these kids become hateful assholes? I'm sure. Mm-hmm. A, a lot of them are, like, you know, it's not a white country anymore. A lot of their friends are... are you know brown and different colors and you, you know so when mo- a lot of their friends half their friends are, are brown of some sort of, of shade and you start talking about people like that they look at you like you have 10 heads like yeah what are you talking they're like about? dude My that's fucked up and gross like you're yeah. like you sound like, like the uncle talk- we don't nasty. invite to thanksgiving <laughs> yeah so like yep. you know they and they are growing up in knowing a lot, lot more than like when i was my daughter's age I was reading Babysitter's Club, and I barely knew about, like, I knew what sex was, but I didn't, like, know about sex. Like, I was still, like, like, you know, I, and because of, the, like, the internet and social media and their friends, you know, they know so much more, and but they, in a good way, in a bad way, it weighs a lot of it, but, like, yeah. they're so aware, and they're so over adults, I completely like, what they agree have to with it. Do with school, <laughs> yeah. Like the yeah. gun stuff, you have no idea how much that really does bother them. Even though, uh, you know, because statistically, they're going to be in a in their school is going to get shot up. Statistically speaking, God forbid that. Mm-hmm. I hope that doesn't happen. But at the rate we're going, so yeah. like doing lockdown drills, that gives them anxiety. You know. So, just, like they just don't understand like they're really just shooting themselves in the foot for future generations yeah i don't think the republicans consistently voting to put children's lives uh i don't know put guns above children's lives are not going to win them any favors when they're literally having to grow yeah. up doing mass sh- i mean doing shooter drills like we didn't have to do that. We had to do tornado drills and you know things of that sort. Fire drills. Right, right, yeah. right. But uh, they're not going to forgive the politicians who, when they say, you know, there's let's take you know Tennessee, you know, and Burchett being like, well, we ain't going to do nothing about it. My kids are homeschooled. Mm-hmm. Let's be nice. Yeah, I want to go back to something you said earlier because. Fascists have already made a huge inroad since the 1930s. We thought we got rid of them. We didn't. Because you mentioned earlier internment camps, right? So we had those. And that, George that Decay grew up in one. Yeah, that policy that the people who created that didn't go away. So do you know who pushed the most for that policy and talked Roosevelt into it? Does anybody know? No. No. Earl Warren. He was Get after out. that. After that, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. There is tons of jurisprudence to this day based on that racist fuck's point of view. Wow, I didn't right? realize so, that. That's right. the fascist inroads that they have into our culture that still, like, every time you talk to a cop, you know, that's governed by Terry versus Ohio, which was Earl fucking Warren. That just, like, that's infuriating. Uh, yeah. As, as much as, like, kids are, you know... Uh, uh, a bit smarter than we are like the gop has set us back at least 10 years oh like, my god yes doctor you know the doc um made a really good point like we were so close we were so close to so much like we were so close to the pet projects and like you know and if we had elected hillary it would have been okay we would have been okay and you know we might not have had the house house and senate but at least damage would have been done and then like you know so much has been set back like row uh 
Rose gone, um, and getting getting Dobbs overturned. I mean, we're gonna have to wait another generation, or you know, get it codified into law. But who's to say they won't bring that to the Supreme Court? No, it, it's like we are so yeah. far back in a lot of ways that it's it's sure. and if we're not careful. If we're not careful, because they're doing a lot of preparations for this generation mm -hmm. to be dumber, to be, um, you know, to strip away education, which is going to shoot us in the foot. You, you know, you want to be the richest, wealth, wealthiest country in the world. Half the reason is because we, we educate our public. I digress. But, um, you know, so much has been laid out to to make it successful in 20 years. So, uh, like, I just... You know, I, I know we got to fight the battle in front of us right now, not 20 years from now, but that's always kind of nagging in the back of my head that. Uh, I agree with you. I mean, we're in for an, another red scare. And I know that a lot of the right thinks that Joseph McCarthy should be, you know, sort of uh, idolized for his ability to root out, quote unquote, the commies. But as everybody knows, I'm no fan of communism. I mean, let's take a look right here. Today in history, Ethel Rosenberg. We all know about Ethel Rosenberg, right? Ethel Rosenberg oh, yeah. and her husband. Mm -hmm. And let's hold on. For the for those of uh, uh, you at home who are playing, who made sure that Ethel Rosenberg got the death penalty? Yes, that's right. Roy Cohn. Trump's mentor, the man who took the place of his father and completely ruined American politics by using the Darvo effect in every possible case, always play the victim, always attack, never, ever, ever admit defeat. Yeah. Roy Cohn was you Trump's know, mentor. Can, can you, just for the people who don't know, are you going to explain what Darvo is? Darvo, my friends, is a manipulative tactic that is used in order to completely deflect blame off of yourself and put it onto somebody else. And if that sounds familiar, I wonder why. Would somebody be so kind yeah. as to read out? It, it stands for, DARVO is an acronym, it stands for Deflect, Accuse, Reverse, Victim, and Offender. Oh, okay, yeah. It's all coming back to me now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's all coming back to me. <laughs> oh, rough. No, because it's stuff like no, that I kind of stuff. I get like, it. That's not a topic I stay on top of. So, like, I know it, but I don't really know it. So it's, like, in the back of my, like, I, my brain's got to think about it for a minute before it's, like, retrieves the information. <laughs> yeah, crazy, crazy. And Roy Cohn had the ability to mainline Darvo into Fox News, which therefore mainline Darvo into the Republican base, because through Trump, um, you know, that's just what we got. Yeah. You know, oh, it's you know actually... I knew, I knew ahead, that right from the Hillary debate where he was couldn't stop sniffing. And then after he's like, oh, yeah. she, she should be drug tested. She's definitely on drugs. I was like, Okay, he was on drugs, like definitely. <laughs> exactly. Like, now that he said that. I didn't know before that, but once he said it, it's like, yeah. He, looking he was back on, on it, yeah, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't think about anything on, at, at the time, but like, yeah, looking back, yeah, he's totally, he was totally on drugs. Well, you know, the old saying: every Republican accusation is a confession. You know, I mean, that's all that pivot and attack really is is Darvo on their part because the difference between us and them is we have facts. So therefore, when we appreciate, when we, uh, uh, you know, when we put facts out there, pivot and attack, right, right, right. When we put facts out there, they immediately have to deflect to something else, you know. Whereas, when Democrats are on the offense, we don't have to really do Darvo so much as pivot and attack, because we have the facts on our side. Yeah, we're not deflecting. We're just going to a completely different thing that's on the same topic where we can attack them. We're not like, oh no, you did that. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, okay, well, yeah, we're not. We're not nope. falling into the defense. Like, no, no, let me no, show awesome. you. Let me. Let, I, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Right. It's like, 
Yeah. Exactly. Blackberry. You would hand over your Blackberry, Tony Bubalinski. Oh, God, that guy. <laughs> that guy. You can't tell me you don't know who invited you. You get invited to the presidential debate. You're hanging out with the candidate and a bunch of his goons. Bing, bing, bong, bong, bing, bing, bing. And you don't remember who invited you? <laughs> You oh. don't remember who invited you. No, like, no, no, not at all. But however, he can recall every little minuscule detail from when the Republicans ask him a question. It's really funny. Isn't that, isn't it, it's funny. It's weird. Like, he didn't look like he tried to pull, like, like a, a Goldman. Uh, what's his first name? The the congressman. Dan. Um, Dan. Dan Goldman. Dan Goldman. Yes, yes. Like Dan Goldman is like kind of like a pit bull, and so is like uh, um, Moskowitz. I want to say Greg Moskowitz, but I went to high school with that kid. Like, Jared. J- Jared, thank you. Um, Jared, like they're like the pit bulls attack, and he was trying to be like a pit bull attack, but he just looked like a douchebag because he like you can't be an asshole and a liar. Mm-mm. It has to be one or the other. If you're going to be an asshole, you have to tell the truth. And they don't realize that, like, in their little scheming, like, it's like, you can't be a, you can't do illegal things and be an asshole either. Because if you do illegal things, and you're an asshole, somebody's going to try to, like, yeah, dig and find out, and then they're going to find out you're doing illegal things because you were an asshole. But, yeah. like, you, you can't well, do both. Like, every defense attorney will tell you, don't break the law while you're breaking the law. Mm-hmm. You know, if you know what yeah. I mean. It's yeah. like don't speed. Wait, you know, don't don't massively speed when you have meth in the trunk or something like that. It's like, don't break the law when you're breaking the law. You're gonna draw I... attention to yourself, and that's what Trump did. Yep. <laughs> don't videotape the uh, the document room or the classified docs on. <laughs> Maybe don't do that. I don't know. Yep. Yeah. That's their defense in uh, Georgia as they're as they're gearing up for that trial. They're like, yeah, but we had, you know, First Amendment. We could say anything we want, ignoring all the other laws that they've broken. Ah, <laughs> yes, yes. Freedom of so speech is can't. not freedom of consequences. Yeah, and guess what? You don't have complete freedom of speech. Like, we have pretty good freedom of speech here. You know, we're on a podcast or whatever. But we can't just be like, yeah, tomorrow I'm going to go kill whatever person. We can't do yeah, that. Yeah, that's not how that works. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, if and if we know that you're serious and we do anything to not stop you or if we let like if you ask us to borrow $20 so you can buy a shovel and we're like part of the conspiracy to commit murder and just as pl- liable for that murder as whoever it so like you know there's only so much you can say before it becomes a crime like you can't commit a crime and talk about like you were talking about it before you commit mm-hmm. committed the crime then you committed the crime exactly how you talked about it like dude that's called conspiracy you planned to do something and you did it like to quote ari melber do you realize you're describing a coup yeah, that's like one of the very few exceptions to a doctor patient yeah. confidentiality. Like if you go into a psychiatrist and you tell them, oh, I bought a gun. I'm going to go do this thing tomorrow. They have to report you, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, otherwise they're breaking the Hippocratic Oath. I'm a mandated reporter. Like if somebody tells me like they were assaulted or, you know, they they have they're going to do like I have to report that or, you know, I can. Not just lose my job, but like be just as liable for not saying anything. Because if they find like go through that person's, e- let's say they tell me through email, like when they're asking me about a question for a class, you know, they'll go through their email and see they emailed me, and you know, so like you're just as liable. So like all these people who are like, I didn't do anything. I was no. If you are, co- if there's documentation that you were with people who did this. And you are just as liable as they are. I'm no attorney, but like, you know, that's how, like, that's how it works. Like, you know, 
Yeah, I mean, John Eastman is learning that right now about, you know, you cannot be uh, an attorney and also be in on the crime. <laughs> oh, I don't... Uh, yeah, and he knew, like, it's just amazing, these lawyers, that they, they knew what they were, they had to have known what they were doing. Oh, everybody knew. And... Just like, like oh, just like yeah. Johnson and Sessions knew about Russia. It's just like, how did you not think that you would, like, they must have genuinely believed that they would get away with it and Trump would pardon them or something. Because, like, but how did you think that you were going to get away with this? Like, I mean. <laughs> it's the same. It's the same thing with the people that, that be, between November and January 6th. Or that one of these court cases was going to turn it all around. They're going to turn it all around. And then mm -hmm. after January 6th, mm -hmm. there is still one of these court cases is going to turn it all around. Mm -hmm. I found one today who's still saying one of these court cases will turn it all around. They're still they they're just stuck in a in a loop. They can't they can't original and they have no other idea. And I'm I'm really gonna beat around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad that Georgia is state law. <laughs> I'm really glad that state law in Georgia, they have to broadcast the trial. Because um, I think it's one of the only trials that's going to be broadcasted. And um, Oh, that's going to be you know, so much content. We got to do it. We got to do it. Oh, yeah. need to see. They need to see this. Yes. Like, they need to see Trump there with his stank face. Just... They need our the snark time. on top of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, election lies are free speech. <laughs> That's just nuts. Like, I don't get Well, it. you know, people in, like, the going back to the Rosenbergs, they were executed. I don't know the, the whole thing that well, but, like, they essentially had, like, classified documents and were caught as russian spies right yep. they were executed yeah. for a lot of what yep. trump did right they had they the ability to not be like... executed but roy Cohn pushed for the death penalty and there's a documentary the about their pair about their uh their i mean sorry their children going and uh looking at the prison and whatnot and being like you know i mean what they did was wrong and there was it was proven that they could have been sentenced to prison without the death penalty. But Roy Cohn, he you know he he wanted to make his name. It's just like people were executed for the same crimes. I mean that one kid in Massachusetts who leaked stuff from the National Guard, like he's in prison right now. He had his day in court and everything. He's already jailed and sentenced. Mm -hmm. I mean, like how is that? How can people reconcile that with themselves? Like. You know, Do you people, know what his sentence was? A, I it didn't was, hear about it. it was, I think it was a while. I want to say it was like seven to ten years. Okay. I might be wrong on that. It's guilty it's until proven wealthy. And it's, it's like, you think Trump is being like treated unfairly? Are you kidding me? Why don't we go ask the Rosenbergs how they feel? Exactly. <laughs> like, why don't we go ask that kid who was just being stupid? And I with, think they were know, giving away nuclear secrets too. I Rosenberg. yeah, I think they were giving away is uh, Israeli nuclear secrets too because they gave they gave away one of our allies, and I'm pretty uh -huh. sure it was. I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was Israel. Um, yeah. or that's what you know. The I'm pretty sure that's what the intelligence that's public says. I you know clearly I don't know that, but um. Was it this week that Trump said that Liz Cheney committed treason for the J6 committee? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah and, they're trying to spin oh, that. And, uh, so Cassie he would Hutchinson want to put her to death over the J6 committee, which exposed his... Crime. Yes, and the person... To execute um, Cassidy Hus Hutchinson, mm -hmm. too, for... It, it, and the person who's fucking leading this charge is Barry fucking Loudermilk, the dude who was shown on video giving tours of the tunnels. <laughs> I can't make this shit up. Insane. The self awareness. The self awareness of that dude. It's enough to make the you crazy. Like, okay. 
<laughs> yeah, we were trying to take it over. They, 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 they have to fully admit it when they when they have to recognize those, those that that happened. Yeah, it's it's I mean, just insane. We've, we've jailed over seven hundred of these guys, the, and they all said, "Yeah, we did it for Trump." Every one of their defense right. attorneys what? said that they did it for Trump. Let me tell you something. Did did we just like plan ahead from 2015 to infiltrate these people's social medias Mm -hmm. to make them look like Trump supporters because we knew we wanted to do this in five years Mm -hmm. and they were willing to spend a few years in prison and like why would we why would we storm the Capitol for election that we won our side won why would we do like you're gonna confuse them with all these facts oh, don't explain that to them they that's what they want just wait until just wait until this year when he loses again and they're gonna they're gonna come up see. with the same thing and they're gonna do the same mo because they can't original and the government's already on it you already see them pulling well, they pulled P Diddy down yesterday, you know. No, the yeah, they're going. Yeah, they're going to clap their ass this time if they try it. And then they're going to play victim afterwards. Yeah, but they're going to clap them like mid October. That's going to be the October surprise. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I got your October oh, October good. surprise right here, buddy. They're going to catch a whole bunch of them in the back of a U-Haul again. <laughs> and oh, we got you know uh from looking at that one video if i would have known if we would have just put turnstiles uh in front of the capitol we could have prevented j6 <laughs> like that would have been fucking dope <laughs> and, oh yeah and their defense was those are feds but it's like yeah you also said the j6ers were feds so it would still work right yeah, yeah. so what so hold on was it us that ripped out the alarm buttons from uh cory bush's office <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> was it us that said Nancy Pelosi has left the chamber in today's 1776? Oh shit! Wait, hold on. That was Lauren Bober. Hang Mike Pence. Was it really us that yeah, said yeah, hang I and erect a gallows? And as we find more of these emails coming out, and you just or you see the new ones coming out or something, and you're like, yeah, we already knew this about them. Yeah. Why didn't we know this at the time? Uh, we, uh, like I said, we got Chris Miller under oath being like, mm-hmm. yeah, we uh, didn't, we even, I mean, if you read the document, it even says like, take it easy on the Trump supporters. Like, it literally says that. Yeah. Like, it, <laughs> what a so, fuck. Like, we, we are the real patriots because like my personal feelings about Mike Pence, if he died tomorrow, I would not care. I would just read it and be like, oh yeah, that's a thing. But while he was the vice president, our vice president being killed by a riot in the Capitol is fucking embarrassing for us as American citizens, right? right? So no, I don't want that to happen as much as I hate the man, because right? yeah. that is just humiliating. No. I'm a real patriot. I actually care about my country. I don't advocate I political violence. Mike <laughs> yeah, I would never yeah. want Mike Pence, like taken by a crowd and hanged no. on, a makeshift on live tv in front of the capitol on live tv on live tv, on they, live they, fucking they, just TV. The, they just released a video of them dragging the gallows out like 5 30 in the morning yeah they, they, i mean that sunlight. was that shit was planned son that shit was planned, planned. they remember the shirts really they showed up well, wearing yeah, they maga civil war yeah, but secret service didn't do anything capitol police didn't do anything because they were told not to do anything they're like yeah yeah that's fine we're going to let them protest whatever they want. But it's their own protest. I'm just tired of the gaslighting when it comes to this because they failed. So they have to, you know, like fucking didn't do a beer hall putsch. And then the thing that really pisses me off is when they try to do their spin and try to blame Antifa and Black Lives Matter and say that it was uh, the equivalent of the Reichstag fire. Yeah, no, yeah. that pisses me off. Yeah. Which Joseph Goebbels, or not Joseph Goebbels, uh, Herman Goering probably lit himself. No, a good chance of it. They were a fucked up army. Mm-hmm. Hey, do you know what else is a crazy ass army that was discovered in this day in history? The Terracotta Army. Oh. Yeah, that's so cool. 1974, too, oh. was discovered by farmers. That's right. That's a cool history. Did not know that today in history that was discovered today. No. Yep. 
look exactly at how creepy. Years. Well, look at the <laughs> a the <laughs> amount <laughs> of detail that went into each one. So a you had to. I mean, well, I'm sorry, that was a, but b. So that meant there was a master sculptor because not just anybody can do this. And it just sort of reminds me of like how many people are actually buried inside of the Great Wall of China that worked on it. Yeah. Yeah, it's this is insane. It's like so cool. You know, we didn't get did we we got off topic from the topics we didn't know about. Oh, we just kept going, didn't we? A couple of the topics that like uh the fun, like the this day in history, I did those. Oh, okay. But also the one of the topics that was Ken Paxton. And then, but another well, one. We still have uh, our up. palate cleanser. We still have a palate cleanser. Oh, okay, okay. <sighs> Let me know when you're ready for that palate cleanser. Are we? Is everybody ready for the palate cleanser? Give us some. Give us some ginger. I want some palate cleanser. Okay. Well, I was. Okay. I point. I pointed out today that, in my opinion, those of us of a certain generation, and a, were just subjected to what I would consider such an abusive amount of Phil Collins that I think we can settle for a class action lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> you could go to a fucking grocery store without hearing Phil goddamn Collins. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and apparently, this was from a Texas newspaper. <laughs> Why did you feel the need to send me this article, Deidre? Because <laughs> I was like, oh my god, we were just you know we were just making jokes like that and i thought oh yeah i was just i guess i just realized i just found this out not too long ago about this whole phil collins having like alamo texas and alamo like collection so like that he donated and now there's a, a whole museum building i guess somewhere near the alamo where he where there's all this stuff that um he had collected and it's pretty insane. And I was like, yeah, I just thought that would be, that was just kind of funny, you know, since we were just making jokes. And I thought, I just thought it was the weirdest thing that Phil Collins had a thing about the Alamo, you know, he was like really enthralled and, you know, really liked they, the Alamo. They all have a thing about losing wars. We lost the Alamo, right? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> The I funny mean, thing is that they were actually fighting to like oh, fighting you. against slavery. <laughs> Santa Ana was. Hi. I think that well, that was a, during our Texas independence from from Mexico. That was that the Alamo was during that part of it. It's like during that those Glen gang, gang days. days. <laughs> yeah, we were trying to become the, you know, our own thing. And, you know, we were, that's why the Lone Star State, you know, for a while, and then we joined the, the, the states, of course. But anywho, I, it was just, I guess for some reason it says in that article, I did not realize that he had collected all the stuff like I'm talking about. You wouldn't believe the collection that he had that I guess as a boy, he would, there was a thing on Disney or something that was about like. Yeah, you know, can, can I read it for everybody? Please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, anyway, I just that built, was back. Yeah, Collins built a collection over several decades, purchasing some items and even discovering some others just steps away from the Alamo itself. Collins fell in love with Alamo's inspiring story as a five-year-old boy when he came across the Disney production of D. Crockett, King of the Wild Frontier. When other children were out playing cops and robbers and other childhood games, Colin says that he was reenacting the Battle of the Alamo. Yeah. And right on. Hey, I'm a dork too. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I won't judge his inner that, nerd. <laughs> I found that so fascinating because I was like, wow, like they would be like the last person who had ever thought that would have. That yeah, would the be, Alamo. Yeah, I would. That is know, awesome. I mean, For Phil Collins, that, of all things. Yeah. That no, might I have, have been that one. Song stuck in my head. 
That might, might be one of my topics for a future show, too. Is Disney <laughs> went from defending World War II to, like, doing Americana for two decades. And it is part of our historical take of a lot of things nowadays. Yeah, there's a lot of Wild West revisionism done. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what kind of changes were made? You know, that could be a, you know, that's a lot. That's a whole conversation in itself. Yeah. But now there's a whole, somebody went in there that I knew. I mean, it's the collection. I mean, it's insane. Like guns and things that people have worn, like Davy Crockett and stuff and guns. And I mean, all just all kinds of different, I mean, and I didn't realize, but it's been recently opened. So <clears throat> I didn't realize it was there and until recently. So I was like, well, I guess we'll talk about that since that kind of ties into our Phil Collins, you know. So. <laughs> I just, I was in Texas. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be you know? really honest. I was watching American Psycho, and <laughs> he was talking about Phil Collins, and I was like, "Ma'am, it is absolutely insane just how much Phil Collins we were subjected to on the reg." Yeah. <laughs> I thought there was only one Lion King, right? The guy is in jail. Now, now Phil Collins did the whole Lion King and Tarzan. Yeah, oh, some uh, yeah. yeah. No, Elton John did Lion King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was Elton John. Uh, was Tar- Phil Collins did Tarzan? Tarzan. Tarzan. No, didn't yeah. Phil Collins do a "Can You Feel the Love Tonight" in the Lion King? Yeah, of- I, I thought he did a song in there. I thought that, that was, was Elton John. John. Yeah, Elton John. That was Elton John. Yeah. Am I thinking it wrong? Okay. Okay. Uh, if we're sitting here, I'm not going to completely bash Phil because uh, always the same has a groove that you can drive your truck through, man. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love in the air tonight? I mean, that's epic. That's like the person epic. drowning. When the drums come in. It's yeah. freaking epic. Like epic. <laughs> we all know. We all can't wait for the drum part. Exactly. So Skip, what you're basically saying is you're like Richard Hammond from Top Gear. You just hate Genesis and Phil Collins. <laughs> and no, no, no. It's, I can't say that I did, I hate them. I can just say that there was so much. Like I can always like <laughs> it was that or the Eagles. Like life happened to Phil Collins or the Eagles if you had the radio on. It was like that's just how it went. Or possibly aha. <laughs> Uh, Shubi, you got a comment from the Twitch stream. It says your kitchen setting reminds me of Katie Britt. But where is she? Really? <laughs> oh, well, she's a little bit out, talk a little outdated, dramatic. but I don't really have the, the cash flow to do the new modern kitchen. So this is like twenty years old. So. Come on. Well, it looks Come. like lived in. Like yeah, you actually, like her kitchen doesn't yeah, look like exactly. she actually lives there. <laughs> like they put her in the oh, corner at like Home Depot and just put a corner, I mean, like corner cam on her. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly right. Come on, Shuby, give us some of that fundy baby voice. <laughs> <laughs> I My hear daughter you. was doing YouTube videos out of here for a couple of years. So she would put them. She's on. She's not quite. She's not big time. It's just grit and groceries for uh, YouTube. Oh, that's rad. For, uh, Y'all need to go check yeah. out her channel. Yeah, for like, groceries. That's basically cool. Gluten free cool. recipes. So. Oh, hey, check it out. Probably. There's a lot of people that have problems with gluten and can't find good recipes. That's dope. I, like legit so, have problems with it not yeah like legit crunchy. yeah yeah exactly and her, now her husband's big time with editing so he edited all of them so i i used to look at him like wow the kitchen was looking okay in that one so but well thanks for the you know compliment in the chat so all right gang now's the time where we take your questions There's a man named Tony in the chat. I want to wish him a happy birthday. And a huge happy birthday to the man who made happy really birthday. all of this possible. There's there's one person whose philosophy brought all of us uh, together to say that we're going to use our snarky powers to punch the Nazis right in the fucking face. And that's Tony Michaels. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy and, thanks, and thanks for telling all of us to out of your fucking ass. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Uh, is he still in the chat? I thought I thought you were going to bring him up, Skip. Uh, he looked like he was. Uh, he, 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 he said that uh, he just wanted to listen in. Um, so, Thanks. our first question of the night from Storm yeah. Virgil. What was the last movie you saw? Let's start with D. Probably Barbie because I love that movie. I love that movie. I actually saw it four times in the theaters and once in IMAX. And I love that movie. <laughs> but that's probably like the last one that I went to see in a theater. But I was trying to think the about the last movie that I was kind of watching uh, the other day. Um, what can I think of it? Because it was it was really it was really good, and it was on um, crap. But anyway, I it's maybe not a movie, but I've kind of been uh, watching Superstore because I didn't watch it. I guess when it was on, so I've been really digging Superstore. Even in whatever bag it's in. What you been watching, Derek? Um, that movie with Virgil last night. He can put in the chat whatever the fuck it was. It was killer violence. I can, That's all I know. I, just, I just can violence. answer that question because that was my answer too. It was called "The Night Comes for Us." It is a gory, violent, uh, gangland enforcer, uh, Asian uh, fight movie. It was, it was awesome. Nice. <laughs> it was brutal. <laughs> oh shit! So, what was yours? We had, got we had a movie night on with the server. Well, that depends. Are you asking about the last one I saw in theater, or what was the last one? I, I don't know. Stern Virgil, maybe he asked this because he knew that it was going to be a trick question because you're going to be like the movie we watched with y'all. Oh, see. Yeah, the last movie I actually watched, like, I don't really watch that many movies just all the way through. So the last one I actually watched was Pumpkinhead when I watched it with all of y'all. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> the last I movie I saw in a theater, and this is how long it's been since I've been in a theater, was The Hobbit. The original Hobbit movie. Damn. It's like 12 years ago. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> all right, Shuby, what was the last movie you watched? Uh, a week ago, I watched Step Brothers. That's a classic. I always love Step Brothers. It's a good oh, one. Yeah. Adelina Wine Mixer. Classic. <laughs> I gotta say, my last. Is, um... Go ahead. Right, go ahead. We'll see. I was gonna say I watched. A, it's not really a movie movie, but like series was The Gentleman on Netflix. Really good. Uh, I, the last, I'd probably say last movie that I watched. Hmm. Good lord, I, I blow through so many consistently. Yeah. Um, I'd probably say Cadillac Records. Uh, that was, oh, yeah. and then also Deadwood. Deadwood. All right, Mighty hey. Librarian. What was the last movie you watched? Um, the last one in a theater was Barbie, but I'm notorious for watching B and C movies on YouTube. And fantastic. Um, you, so, I don't know. It was some bullshit movie last night on I'm YouTube. Okay. It was terrible. <clears throat> I'd have to, like, look back on it. But, you know, I find, like, for every shitty movie that I find on YouTube, <laughs> <laughs> I, I find some, like, really, really good independent movies. Like, some, like, you'd never heard of but like some of them win awards and stuff. I saw this really cool. Um, it was a short, but it was um, they won this like international film competition. But they took film 100% from the space program, from like you know open you know open documents or, or video clips, and they stitched them together to like make this movie. If it's like 10 minutes long, but it looks like completely legit. Like it's a story about like an astronaut on the space station. It was crazy. Like it was, it, it was really good. But yeah, I'm notorious for like giving lots of bad movies a chance. And 
I recommend Sharknado, and some people believe me and then see it, and then like, you think that movie was great? I'm like, I didn't say it was great. I just recommended it. <laughs> How many copies of Velocipaster do you own? <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't think I own, own that. Um, I, I have to take mine back. Names, My latest though. one I saw was Blues Brothers, now that I'm remembering. Uh, oh, gosh, that was that, that was the one that I saw. It wasn't Cadillac Records. Um, I'm a sucker for um, like apocalypse like movies. So like my if you saw my YouTube algorithm, like like you'd be like, okay, you need to lay off the <laughs> like zombie apocalypse or you know asteroid <laughs> apocalypse. I got to give a shout out if we're talking about indie films uh, to Emma Dark. Emma Dark is an amazing independent filmmaker. You should check her uh, horror films out. Tony TV, what's the last movie you watched? Uh, we were watching It Calls the Night last night on uh, right here on Discord. We were oh. hanging out. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the ultraviolence. Yeah, I think the last movie I saw might have been something like, I think it was Ghostbusters at the local theater. Every like, nice. Tuesday or Wednesday, they do like a flashback movie. Nice. Night. So, oh, that's cool. That's, that's fun. All right. Well, because I haven't been to the theater in months. Next question. I guess we can just give out some shout outs. We got Vixen, Ratchet. Benny, hi, hanging out on the Twitter. Hey. Virgil, right hey everybody, thanks for coming and listening. Gosh, it's it's late in Germany for you guys, or early, depending on how you look at it. Wow, it's like eight twenty-one. I'm like, I'm about to turn into a pumpkin and stuff. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I well, that's still er, like late slash early, two twenty one. I thought it was like for some reason like three or four a.m. Um, oh, you guys don't do you guys don't do daylight savings anymore, do you? I don't know why we have to do it still. I want to go back to standard time. I hate daylight savings. Hate it. I hate it. Skip. I wanna... We can't. None of us can hear you. I can see you talking, but none of us can hear you. Yeah, I'm not sure if the can the picture went out too. Oh, you're amazing too, Dixon. Thank you have you, the Vixen. best phone voice too. I think we lost the host. Yeah, I don't know where Skip went. I don't know. But like if we get rid of daylight savings, I don't want to be on daylight savings all the time. I want to go back to standard time. I want to get my hour back and like mm -hmm. I don't want it to be like ten o'clock at night and the sun just went down. Because I live on my, my microphone was like fuck you. I'm like hey that's awesome. Obviously I'm just a big fat nerd. Short circuit. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> gremlins, gremlins. I remember watching that as a kid. It's a good movie. Yeah. yeah. And then as a kid, short circuit two made me cry. I'll tell you what's fucked yeah. up is they took the same dude that played the virus in Hackers and made him the Indian guy in Short Circuit 1, painted him up, and made him do the accent. Yeah, it was a very stereotypical accent. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> it was the 80s. You got away with a lot back then. Yeah, yeah the, it, the, you can't fault them for the 1980s. Uh, oh, yeah. A lot happened. But I, I, I would have <laughs> never, ever thought that that was actually the virus from Hackers. Remember that? Remember that yeah. movie? Not only, oh, yeah. Yeah, it not only had one of the yeah, best soundtracks of the 90s, aside from The Crow, but um, yeah, that, that was him, the dude. <laughs> that, that was the virus. <laughs> And then I think Penn Jillette was in that movie too. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, absolutely. Craziness, huh? Yeah. Okay, I think I got mine. Okay. Okay, like actually there's like three that I like are tied for first place. Jurassic Park. I always have to watch that if it's on Independence Day always have to watch that one mm -hmm. and princess bride love that movie oh. <laughs> and i don't even like romance movies and like that i i oh i love it i can't watch airheads without 
sobbing uncontrollably because I've lived the life of Ch- the life of Chaz Darby. <laughs> <laughs> like uncontrollably, you've never seen someone watch a rock and roll movie and just cry like they just watched the mm-hmm. most tragic thing I've ever seen. That's me. Is that yours, Skip? What's that? Yeah, Airheads is like the story of me, aside from I never, ever, like, you know, had to hold up a radio station, like, in order to get my demo played. They just didn't play my demo. It was really easy. (laughs) (laughs) Um, What what about you, Shub? Well, if I'm going to just go with one, it's it's Field of Dreams. So that's a good one. A lot of family history there. My family's from Iowa, so the whole cornfield. And I get kind of emotional because I had a conflicted relationship with my dad. So, no, oh, yeah, so I totally get story. it. Yeah. yeah, I get it. The story he had with his dad was, you know, crazy. So, I had the same thing. So, I can't even talk about it right now. So, I'm gonna mute. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, but, oh, completely no. get it. That's my number one. Yeah, completely so, get it. But, but if I gotta go with like Mighty Librarian, a couple more, I would go Top Gun and like Jerry Maguire. Those kind of. That's a good one. Uh, yeah, classic. That's the first movie. R-rated movie I saw. Wait, no, not, maybe not the first. The first I saw in the theater. My my friend's sister got us, bought us the tickets to go see it. <laughs> well, there's your daughter. Hi. 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 Welcome. Dark crystals, I said. Oh, the dark yeah, crystals are classic. Movie one. Oh. and the color purple oh god oh, color man. purple I, I, crush yourself, man, crush man yourself. if you if you Girl, didn't if you didn't like danny glover or his knees yeah. prior <laughs> Jeez. it doesn't matter how many times i see that movie out oh god it breaks me every time yeah Fun, man. No, it's a great movie. Um, speaking of Danny Glover, um, the Red Violin, and like what what is so awesome about that movie is, like, you really don't understand it. Like, it's kind of like you're like, what the fuck are they talking about? And then you hit the last half hour when everything comes together in this beautiful symphony of like, what the fuck? Great movie. And yes, it's about a red violin. It's the story of the red violin throughout, like, it starts in the 1500s and, like, like you know, it's present day. The red violin still exists and it's the story of how it got to be here. It sort of reminds me of, uh, there was a movie that was done by... Um... The same animation company that did the um, the original Hobbit movie in the 70s, and it's called American Pop. And it was about this family lineage dating back to, you know, coming uh, to America from Russia and how music had always been part of this family's lineage, uh, you know, dating through World War II into the 80s into modern day and how um, this kid who, uh, you know, was part of this family's lineage who didn't know about all this like ends up becoming a rock star without knowing it it's so good it's animate ralph bakshi that's the animator ralph bakshi definitely recommend watching it especially if you know you're like a, a music uh aficionado but also are the kind of person who is interested in how one family's lineage can move from um what? one country to another and still keep up you know certain things just an amazing flick what about you d (laughs) oh she just muted okay i guess i I guess i'll go i don't know so i mean my favorite movie i've talked about it before is the outlaw josie wales it's such a good movie it's done in the style of the old spaghetti westerns by clint eastwood and it's just just sprawling epic western you know of loss retribution atonement and forgiveness in the end it's it's a really well written piece and it's really well acted and directed cool 
And now D. My turn. <laughs> yep. Oh God, I have so many name. I think growing up, like some of my dear favorites and that, that I still love today is like Mary Poppins and of course Sound of Music. That's a great one. Yeah. It's probably. Oh, one. I love the Sound of Music. Yeah. Yeah, that's sound a good one. Good anti fash film. You no, know, it's okay. not. No, it's not. I, I had to watch that movie way too many times because my dad loved it. I hate the sound of music. I love it. Yeah. I think I still have it on VHS. Like, I think. Oh, my I... God. And Annie. <laughs> like, I, 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 had, I loved Annie. Mm. Like, the 82 version of, you know, Annie. It's a hard knock. Like, I was obsessed with Annie. And then, but, um, but as I got older, you know, of course, I, I still think, of course, there's a lot of movies up there, but Pride and Prejudice is probably, like, one of yeah, my movies so. that's kind of like my comfort go-to, that I just love the, the, the cinematography, the music, everything is just is absolutely beautiful, and so I always seem to, high, I, just, I hold that in very high regard one of my favorites visually and everything yeah i think the sound of music is one of those movies that you should also watch along with cabaret at the same time to get a a feeling of uh how normal people were dealing with what was going on around them as fascism was rising yeah. like it's, all about, it's all about you know the rise of hitler and that kind of thing and what was happening and you know he didn't want to be a part of it and yeah what what happens if like i mean it's very on a kind of very glossed you know tone but at the same time you know at like you had to go through some shit to resist that kind of stuff right openly you know to you couldn't just leave like no yeah uh actually it was really funny um I was talking with Tamara, apparently in Berlin, where the Stasi headquarters was, when, uh, you know, pretty much the Berlin had been taken over by the Russians. And as we all know, the Nazis really enjoyed getting rid of their evidence of their crimes. So when it got to the point where they couldn't even burn papers anymore because there was too much they just threw them all around the office just so like you know how hard it would be to like fucking put all of it back together you know what i mean because it's just folders upon folders upon folders of information and uh and still good record keepers apparently too, like, still listen, listen oh yeah yeah, yeah. to this day apparently there's still people who volunteer putting together this information and um, oh, wow. you can actually contact them if you lived back then, you know, like the, this was an example of it was an older gentleman telling this story on uh, German news, but uh, he contacted them and was like, do you have any information on me? And they're like, uh, yeah, here it is. Like, <laughs> like, cause he was a traveler, like he was going from place to place, you know, just having to, I, I guess whatever his occupation was and required him to do a lot of traveling in and out of various countries. But they're just like, yeah, here's uh, your folder from the Stasi here. <laughs> wow. It's crazy. Absolutely is. Well, gang, I think this is going to wrap up episode three of Die Bar of Democracy. Thank you all so much for coming, everybody. And thank you, D, for hosting us tonight and giving us so many great topics to talk about. Y'all come back now, you hear? (laughs) (laughs) Now listen to a story. Bye, everyone. All right, y'all. Make make sure that... uh, They're fucking Nazis. <laughs> happy, they're fucking Nazis. Happy birthday, Tony Michaels. You crazy bastard. We love you so much. Bye, everybody. Have a good weekend. Bye, guys. All right, gang. Yeah. We will talk to you later. Later, skaters. Good show. See ya.